When it comes to optimizing Google Shopping campaigns, there's a lot more to it than just editing some bids every now and then. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some advanced tactics to help you get better results from your Google Shopping. So let's get cracking. There are three areas that you, you can look, out, look at when it comes to optimizing your shopping campaigns. We can look at our feed, our campaigns, and our website. So the first and probably I think one of the most important areas that you need to think about when you're trying to get better results from your Google Shopping is optimizing that product feed. There's so much that you can do here that will help you beat your competitors and improve the overall performance of your campaigns. So what do I mean when I talk about optimizing your product feed? Again, one of the most important things is to have relevant product titles. So when I say relevant, I mean relevant to what your customer is actually inputting into Google when they are searching for your products. This is not necessarily the name of your product. So what you need to do is you need to do some keyword research, understand how people search for your products. And then when you're submitting your product data to Merchant Center, you use those terms and phrases in the product titles that you submit to Google Merchant Center, because those titles that you submit to Google don't have to be the same as the product titles that you actually show on your website. So very important stage in the optimization process and the setup process of your shopping campaigns is to make sure that you do the research and optimize those product titles. Another really important area also is your product descriptions. Product descriptions may not be quite as important when it comes to the actual search results in Google and optimizing for search, but it adds context. So there's only so much you can, there's only so many words and phrases you can put in a product title. What a product description allows you to do is add more context to that. It helps Google to understand more about your product so that they know whether it's relevant to something that somebody is searching for. You can obviously also include keywords in that description, supplementary and secondary keywords that are still relevant, but might not be the primary keywords that you want your products to show up for. So make sure you haven't just got half a sentence as a product description, make sure it's filled out and also make sure that that is useful to the customer when they actually land on your page so that it helps them make the decision about buying the products. We'll come more to that in a little while. The product type attribute. That is another really important element of your product feed. The product type allows you to input your own categorization for your products. And what it does it is, again, it helps Google to understand more about your product, where um, where it sits sort of in the product, in your product categories on your website and how it is relevant to a customer. So product types, um, the best way to really think about a product type is to think about it as a hierarchical structure, similar to a navigational, the navigation on your website, where you will, you'll sort of group products together and then you can use that in your product type. So you might have a sofa and you might have, you know, your, top level product type would be would be home furnishings or home furniture and then you'd have living room furniture and then you'd have sofas and armchairs and then you might have leather sofa okay it, the whole process of optimizing your product type helps google to understand what your product exactly what your product is and again helps them to understand whether that product is relevant to a search somebody is putting into google your google product category again um help Google to understand what your product is about and, and what it, you know, exa exactly how it fits in, um, in with, with other products that are similar on the market. Make sure you have the, the most accurate Google product cat category. They go down to five levels on some of them. Make sure you don't just plump, you know, plump for the top level category. Pick the most accurate to give Google that information that it needs. All appropriate attributes. If your product, if there's a color, a material, a size, make sure that you include all of that in your product feed. If that's not something that you can add within your, your store back end to feed through, use a supplemental feed. Add in as much information as you can. Even if Google is not giving you a warning to say it's missing, if you can add 
you know, a gender, an age, a size, a material, anything like that. Make sure you add as much as possible because the more information that you give to Google about your products, the more able Google is to know when that product is relevant to a search that happens on Google. So that's what, what I mean when I'm talking about optimizing your product feed. Another really important thing, which I think a lot of people overlook until something goes really badly wrong, is errors and warnings inside Google Merchant Center. It's common to always, you know, it's very rare to never have a single error or warning in a Merchant Center account. Things are always popping up all the time. You need to regularly go in, I'd say at least once a week, if not every day, depending on how big your product catalog is and how often it changes, and check to see what errors you have and what warnings you have. The red errors mean that your products are not showing up on Google Shopping at all. So obviously those are the most important thing to fix first. And it, you know, if you're, if you end up with too many, a high, a very high percentage of errors in your feed, your whole account will get suspended. So this is something that you really need to be on top of all the time. The warnings, which are the ones with the yellow triangles, those products are still active, but what Google is telling you is that you are not getting the exposure that you could be getting if you added more information most of these as in this example here um the, the the warnings are usually missing information so for example here we've got missing gtins um mpns and brands and that kind of thing make sure you're in merchant center regularly to spot these and to fix them and that really will help get you you know start to get you better results in your google shopping over the long term so the second area where we need to be optimizing our shopping campaigns to get the best performance is obviously inside the campaigns themselves. So most people are aware that they would need to go and maybe if they're not using automated bidding, then maybe they will, um, or, or a smart campaign or something, then they will, they're aware that they would need to maybe go and adjust their product group bids. Maybe they will go in and check their device performance and adjust their device bids and that kind of thing. So that's the basics of campaign optimization. What a lot of people don't spend as much time on is negative keywords. We forget because we don't actually use keywords as such in a shopping campaign. It's easy to overlook the fact that you can still add negative keywords so on a regular basis say again maybe weekly um, you need to go into those search queries and start mining mining the data in there to look and see what search queries and search terms you're showing up for that should be added as negative keywords so there are a couple of things that you're looking for you're looking for search queries that might have a very a high spend and then are getting no conversions at all or you might have search queries that have a high spend and they are converting, but they're converting at a very, very low return on ad spend. So they're actually not profitable. They might even be losing you money. So as you see these search queries, you're going to add those as negative keywords. Now your thresholds, I can't give you say, if you've spent X added as a negative keyword, because that is going to vary. It's going to vary based on what products you're selling, what the values of the products. It will vary depending on what your budget is. So if you've got a very high budget, you might have a little bit more leeway as to how much you can spend before you want to add a term as a negative keyword. If your budget is very tight, then you're probably going to want to be more aggressive and get rid of terms much, much more quickly so that you can spend your budget in the most efficient way. So regularly, I'd say at least probably once a week, go into those search queries and have a look and see what's working and what's not and get rid of the search terms that aren't. Another thing that people tend to forget, and this is even this, this you can even do if you're running smart shopping campaigns, which, you know, there are, but you can't really do much to optimize a smart shopping campaign, but you can do this. And that is to look for specific products within a campaign that are not performing. Again, we're looking for products that might be spending a lot and getting no conversions, or we might be looking for products that are spending and converting, but they're getting either a very low return on ad spend or actually 
you know, a, a negative return on our spend, if you like. So they're getting an, a, a ROAS less than one. In both these situations, what you can do is simply exclude that product from your campaign so that your budget can be then put towards the products that are doing well, that are converting and that are getting you a good return. Again, the thresholds with this is going to vary depending on your business. Depends on how much your, you know, again, how much budget you have available. The lower the budget that you have, probably the more aggressive you're going to be and the more assertive you'll be in getting rid of products that aren't sort of pulling their weight, so to speak. But again, maybe once a week, once a month, depending on how much you're spending and how um, how many products you have. But on a regular basis, go in there and look for those products that just aren't working and get rid of them. So another thing that you can obviously work on doing is actually enhancing your actual shopping ad, because the more attractive we can make our shopping ad, the more likely we are to get the click. And if we can get the click, um, and it's a relevant ad and our product is relevant, um, then we're more likely to get the sale. So a few examples here. We've got, if you notice on the top left, a couple on the top left, we've actually got the sale icon showing and then the price, the old price and the new price. If you have reduced your prices, if you're having a sale, make sure that your settings in your feed are set to actually submit the sale price and the and the normal price and then it will show like this in google shopping the default in a lot of the apps is if you have a sale price like this is to just submit the sale price as the normal price in which case you don't get this it doesn't show as being on sale so make sure you check that in your settings if it's relevant and if it's appropriate for you use a promotion extension the bottom the very bottom right ad here you can see it it's got a little icon there that says special offer um and so if you click on that it will open up and give you and say and tell you you know you've got a coupon code you can save x percent or save an amount if you buy this product it's great at attracting the eye helps to improve the look of your ad compared with everybody else's and will help you get that click and obviously i think one of the most important ones, which were illustrated in all of those top three ads there, is to get product reviews. If you can get your product reviews and get those reviews showing up on your Google ads, it really does stand out and make you look, not only make your ad look more attractive, obviously it makes you look more trustworthy, more reputable, more established, um, and you're more likely to get people clicking on your ad because they're more likely to trust you and trust that the product is a good product. So finally, let's look at what we can do actually on our website. Massive time is money. How quickly does your site load? It's been shown that people are so impatient. If, you're t if your site takes more than three seconds to load, they are out of here. So make sure you check how quickly your site loads. And if it's slow, well, even if it isn't slow, you should always do this on a regular basis. On a Shopify store, for example, make sure if there are any apps you're not using, uninstall them, get rid of them. And if necessary, get somebody, find somebody on Upwork or Fiverr who can actually remove the, the code in the theme files for these apps. Because very often, if you uninstall the app, it doesn't always remove the actual code inside the theme files. And that's what slows the website down as it tries to load all this code for all these apps it's running. That's what slows the load times down. So make sure you know you look at your apps and say do i really need this one and if you don't get rid of it same for wordpress with plugins and woocommerce if you have plugins that you're not using uninstall them get rid of them are you optimizing your image file sizes if you're uploading in product images that are a me one megabyte that is going to dramatically slow down the speed of your site use an optim use a, a, a file size optimizer i use pixlr you can even to do it to some extent in you can do it in Canva. But when you're uploading product images, make sure you get the file size as small as possible, ideally under 80 kilobytes so that we can get fast page load times on product pages and on category pages, which might be um, image heavy. And obviously the home page, if you've got banners on the home page, make sure those banners, the file sizes of those banners are nice and small so it doesn't slow down your site is a, a big one with is this is the speed can't stress it enough another one optimizing your checkout 
And obviously I'm talking about your site now. I mean, the title of the video is optimizing your shopping campaigns. But the point I'm making is if your website is well optimized, your shopping campaigns will work better. And this is something that a lot of people overlook. They stress and they focus solely in Google ads and wondering what they can do in there without thinking that actually you could make changes on your website that will actually make the whole process work better and will make your ads work and be more profitable as well. So when it comes to your checkout, make sure you have express payment options available. This is not only a usability issue for um, my, my mother is visually impaired. If a website does not take PayPal, she cannot check out because she cannot read the card number on her, her, her credit card. So, but it's also a speed issue. People are in a rush. They don't want to be, you know, they haven't got their wallet on them. They can't be bothered to go and get their card and get up from the sofa. Make it easy for them. Have the express payment options. Make sure it's a get, you can have a guest checkout. Don't force them to sign to, to create an account. That's a big no, no. Uh, and also have a, have a one page checkout if you can, so that it's not click after click after click after click. Make it fast and make it easy and the faster and the easier it is for them to check out the more likely they are obviously to complete the checkout and the last thing i want to talk about is your product page so your product page is really going to be doing the heavy lifting all the campaigns do is get the people to your site when they land on your product page you need to make sure that that product page is going to be able to do the work of selling that product you need to have great product images you need to have a great description. The description needs to tell, you know, people can't pick up the product. They can't handle it. So your description needs to help them to understand that this is the right product for them. It's exactly what they're looking for. Um, and give them as much information as you can help them to make that decision. Um, you know, make sure that it's easy to check out. Make sure that the add to cart button is actually visible, that they don't have to scroll down the page to try and find it. Again, product reviews. You know, if, if you can get product reviews, it's social proof. It helps people to see that, hey, this is a good product. Other people have bought it. You know, people like that. People like to feel that they are doing what, you know, other people are doing the same as them. And, you know, it makes them feel good to know that, you know, other people have bought this and they like it. And so they're going to be much happier about buying that product themselves and completing that checkout. So again, don't overlook the fact that you need to make sure that your product pages are really fit for purpose. And if you do all of this on a regular basis, this is when you start sort of getting the gold or finding the gold in your Google ads account. It's not Google ads is not this island on its own. You have to remember that Google Ads does the work of getting the customer to the site, but your website has to do the job of actually getting them over the line and completing that purchase. So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, um, hit the bell icon, then you'll get notified. Um, share this video with anybody else that you might think is of interest. And if you want to get more support, with both Google Shopping and your um, making the most of your e-commerce website and growing your online store, then head over to onlineretailacademy.com and check out my membership where we have access to a full Google Shopping course. There are weekly Q&As. You get full support to help grow your online store. I hope to see you there. Take care.